Welcome back everyone. The furnace has been on full blast this afternoon with temperatures in the triple digits in many spots and so far sadly things have been pretty quiet on the radar except for one spot in southeastern Cameron County that is south of Port Isabel. We saw a very persistent thunderstorm really not moving for the past few hours. It's finally died down but it dumped a lot of heavy rain just south of Port Isabel. Otherwise, it's been quiet. We may have an isolated shower or two over the next hour or so in the valley, but that is about it. Should stay quiet otherwise and just hot for the rest of this afternoon. Look at the temperatures right now. 104 in Rio Grande City, 101 in McAllen, 102 in Edinburgh, 103 here at the station, 93 in Raymondville, and 98 degrees in Harlingen. When you factor that humidity into their temperature, it feels like 106 in Rio Grande City, 108 in Harlingen, and 108 as well in Raymondville. So here's your evening planner forecast. We will start off this evening hot, hot, hot with temperatures in the lower 90s at 7 p.m., mid 80s and 9 o'clock this evening, partly cloudy skies. Lower 80s at 11 o'clock tonight will start off with partly cloudy skies, and some of those clouds should start to thin out later on this evening. Look at the temperatures elsewhere across Texas. Right now, 78 degrees in Dallas, Fort Worth, 78 in Abilene, 102 in Laredo, out west, 88 in El Paso, 79 in Houston, and 85 degrees in Amarillo. Now, here's the situation. We are watching this big trough of low pressure aloft. This is the upper level map. This is about 18,000 feet in altitude. So that trough is shown by this dotted black line. The reason why we're showing this to you is because it will start to dig tonight, it will increase the instability just a bit here in the valley. So that means we have, we should have, a slightly better chance of some showers and thunderstorms here tomorrow. But at most, we're talking about a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms. I know we didn't see much today, but we're still calling for about a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow as this upper level trough starts to get close to our region. Then behind the trough for Friday, the rain chances diminish somewhat and should be mainly dry for Saturday and Sunday and most maybe a stray shower or storm. But we're only talking about a 10% chance of rain at this point for your weekend. We'll zoom in on future tracks. Some clouds for early on this evening, partly cloudy skies for tomorrow. We still think there is that chance for some uh, showers and thunderstorms, especially late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. The model hints at a chance of some showers and thunderstorms toward the upper valley at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. Some passing clouds for tomorrow night. So we'll call for a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow, 20% chance of a shower or storm Friday. We're down to a 10% chance of a shower for your Saturday and for Sunday. On the water, watch out for some spotty showers or thunderstorms tonight and tomorrow. We'll have winds out of the southeast at around 10 to 15 knots. The bay waters light to moderate chop. Your next tide is a low tide at 635 this evening and the seas are one to two feet. So for tonight, just a few clouds light. It is warm and it is muggy once again with low temperatures in the upper 70s. Then for tomorrow, partly cloudy skies continue. Keep the umbrellas handy just in case. We're going to put in a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms. High temperatures being the upper 90s with triple digits for McAllen, Edinburgh, and the upper valley. So again, not everybody's going to see the rain, but if it does rain on you, it could be heavy at times. Here's that seven day forecast. Upper 90s continue Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have a 20% chance of rain Friday, followed by a 10% chance of a shower Saturday and Sunday, back to about a 10 to 20% chance of rain for Monday and Tuesday. That's your first sworn five forecast. Now here's Carrie. Running is known to be good for your heart and your muscles, but new research says it could also be good for your brain. Channel 5's Gabriela Garza has more on a study that may convince you to get moving. Gabe Magoyan is an Arizona State champion middle school runner. Each day I just kind of have like a mini goal to like, like just do whatever on my run and then once I'm done I feel like I've done something for the day. Now on the right is, is our images of the study. Gene Alexander and David Reichlin compared MRIs of 11 collegiate runners and 11 non-runners. By looking at those uh, scans, we were able to tell that the endurance athletes who were engaged in a lot of physical activity had areas of, in the brain that were more active and more connected uh, than the non-athletes. The red here shows more connection between parts of the brain responsible for memory, decision-making, and multitasking. The yellow shows the same thing. This could be from increased blood flow or production of factors that help neurons work better and grow. What we know right now is that uh, something is better than nothing. And so more than likely you're going to get big bang for your buck if you go from very little activity to some activity. Brain connectivity diminishes as we age and is a factor in disease like Alzheimer's. What the researchers learned from young runners now could help aging adults later. We're hoping to find ways in which we can use exercise 
to improve the brain function and structure as we age and provide recommendations and, uh, and prescriptions for better aging. For Medical Breakthroughs, I'm Gabriela Garza, Channel 5 News. Increased brain connectivity has also been found in people who do activities using fine motor skills like playing musical instruments. The researchers say running also takes complex thinking as athletes navigate or plan where to run and how to keep balance. Amazon hosting job fairs all across the country. They're trying to fill roughly 50,000 positions. We have details coming up next. And NASA just posted a job, but the requirements may be fit for a superhero. We'll explain. You're watching Channel 5 News at 4. Hi, I'm Dr. Glatz. The Valley has some of the highest counts of airborne allergens in the country. And partly because of this, sinonasal disease is more common in the Rio Grande Valley than in other parts of the nation. Being able to move air is important. When your nose and sinuses are obstructed, you're predisposed to infection and sleep problems, not to mention you just feel awful. I understand what you're going through, and I can help. Whether you need a balloon sinuplasty or just a prescription, we tailor a treatment that's right for you. Ask about the GLATS guarantee. We stand behind our work. Come see our dad. You'll be glad you did. Does your electric bill have you doing a double take? I guess you're going back to work, babe. Avoid being shocked each month by switching to Payless Power. Everyone is approved with no deposit and no credit check. Plus, get daily alerts that allow you to manage your costs and your budget. Texans are saving hundreds of dollars a year by making the switch. So visit us at PaylessPower.com or give us a call and stop getting shocked by your electric bill. Payless Power, giving you the power to pay less. When you walk in the doors at Boswell Ella Ford, you get a good feeling. We want your visit to be a pleasant one. We're not just about making customers, we're all about making relationships. Boswell Ella Ford in San Benito. Relationships for generations. Tonight, the new head of the FBI gets ready to take charge. What this means for the future of the Russia investigation as the White House defends the president's weighing in on that Don Jr. statement. This is where America turns for answers. World News Tonight with David Muir. If you're like most Americans, you have a medicine bottle somewhere in your cabinet and they might pose more of a risk than you realize. ABC's Maggie Ruley has more. Leftover prescription pain pills. For many of us, they're in the back of the medicine cabinet just in case. But with the opioid epidemic sweeping the country, these pills often end up in the wrong hands. Family friends. And a new report suggests just how many of us are leaving the door open to this threat, particularly people who are prescribed these pain-killing pills after surgery. Researchers at Johns Hopkins looking at past research find that the overwhelming majority of surgery patients don't end up taking all the opioids in their prescriptions. Up to 71 percent of all pills dispensed to patients are not used, except perhaps by addicts. Even when people try to get rid of these pills, they don't do it right. Fewer than one in 10 of those surveyed use proper FDA recommended disposal techniques. So what should you do with leftover prescription pills? Dispose of them safely. That means contact your local pharmacy, hospital or clinic for medication take back programs. Doing so may save someone's life. With this Medical Minute, I'm Maggie Ruley, ABC News. Do you think you've got what it takes to defend the Earth? If you do, NASA has a job for you. The space agency just posted an opening for a planetary protection officer, and it comes with a six-figure salary. Your job is to make sure space missions don't contaminate other planets and moons. The position was created as part of the Outer Space Treaty of 1967. Now to Amazon's latest hiring blitz, the internet giant posting its biggest help wanted sign ever. Amazon is promising to fill 50,000 jobs in warehouses nationwide. Giant job fairs from Seattle to New Jersey are drawing droves of hopeful hires. They're all lining up for packing and shipping positions at fulfillment centers across the country. You don't need a resume. Um, we will be doing an application here on site. 
uh, and you'll also be interviewing with our recruiters. Remember, Amazon recently acquired Whole Foods for nearly $14 billion. This latest hiring rush has many experts wondering what else Amazon will add to its shopping cart. It's time now to check in with our Pump Patrol for a look at our gas prices right here in the Valley. I'm Taylor Weagle and we are in Alton off of Glasscock in Five Mile Line where gas here is $2.99 a gallon. This is Frank McCaffrey at the intersection of Airport and Business 83 in Westlaco at the Phillips 66, where a gallon of gas is $2.69. Frank had the lowest price today with $2.16, and we remind you, if you see a better deal, just give us a call at one of the numbers on your screen right now. You can also email us when you visit our website, krgv.com. This small device can be a lethal weapon in the hands of the wrong child. And that's exactly what happened here. She was even told, why don't you kill yourself? A preteen takes her life after she's bullied online. Her parents are now seeking justice. We have their story right after the break. Introducing El Pollo Loco's new taco platters. A hearty plate full of tacos, rice, and beans. From chicken avocado to shrimp mango, Try new El Pollo local taco platters today, fresh from the grill. We just had a baby. We needed a bigger vehicle. He did surprise me. I was expecting like some flowers, but I never expected a truck. There's no words. It's, it was something very emotional. Yeah, I love my experience here at Bird Ogden Chevrolet Mission, thanks to Oscar and, and Jerry. And uh, I would definitely come and buy another vehicle here. It made me happy to see my mom so happy. It's something that I'm never going to forget, and I thank them so much. Dale gas! Most car crashes happen just a few miles from home. When you've been hurt in a car crash, do you think those big city insurance companies care about what's best for you? To them, you're just a number. For me, it's personal. I'm proud to serve the good people of Texas. I'm Alex Begum, and you know my law firm, the Begum Law Group. If you've been hurt in a car crash, Pick up the phone. Calls for free at 909 Hertz. Don't settle for less. Why Donna ISD? Donna ISD produces graduates who have gone to Ivy League and other distinguished universities throughout the nation. Students like Jacqueline Muniz, who is earning her doctorate in educational leadership at Columbia University. And Deanne Vasquez Medrano, who is pursuing a doctorate in mechanical engineering at New York University. If you're looking for a first-rate education, then Donna ISD is the place you want to be. Donna ISD makes it happen. Introducing El Pollo Loco's $20 Grande Value Meal. With 10 pieces of fire grilled chicken plus two extra grande portions of delicious sides like serrano studded pinto beans and Mexican style rice. Get your $20 Grande Value Meal today and order ahead with our app. A 12 year old girl took her life after being the victim of cyberbullying. Her parents are now planning to sue the school for failing to take action after multiple complaints. Amy Robach has her story. The parents of 12 year old Mallory Grossman say they will sue her school after they say administrators ignored countless complaints over cyberbullying, which they say led to her suicide. This small device can be a lethal weapon in the hands of the wrong child. And that's exactly what happened here. She was even told, why don't you kill yourself? Diane and Seth Grossman say their daughter was bullied relentlessly for months by fellow classmates on social media sites, in some instances on school property, and that Copeland Middle School did nothing to intervene. Rockaway school system never filed the mandatory HIB reports, even though I countless emailed them and requested that a HIB report be written and filed. They never did. Mallory took her own life in June, nine months after the Grossman say they first contacted the school pleading for help as their daughter began suffering. In the civil realm, um, the individuals that harassed, stalked, bullied, potentially have liability. Arguably their parents do. 
in certain circumstances and the school system could be held responsible as well. According to the Cyberbullying Research Center, 34% of students surveyed report having been cyberbullied in their life and adolescent girls are more likely to experience the abuse. Mallory's parents now hoping this tragedy will shed light on the growing issue. We were in the process before all of this happened about taking her out of the school and putting her into private school, but unfortunately she didn't give us the chance to. The Grossmans say they were in contact with the school once a month since their first complaint in October. Their lawyer says they may also potentially sue the families of the alleged bullies. A reminder from a former FBI agent, parents should monitor their children's social media sites. He says parents should install security apps to monitor their children's online activity. You can also use the website safekids.com. Make sure you check their social media account privacy settings too and regularly check into those accounts to monitor who your children are communicating with. Also, talk to your children about the effects of bullying. If you are heading to the beach this weekend, this is what we're looking at. The high temperatures will top out in the upper 80s. We've got mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies and at most maybe a stray shower. In any case, the UV index remains extreme, so please use plenty of sunscreen. We're going to take a look at the forecast for the next seven days in just a bit.